Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. A 15-year-old shot in the head during an unsupervised hotel sleepover. I classify this as something that is totally preventable. Now Southfield police are left with a lot of questions about where the parents were and how the teens ended up there in the first place. At an update late this afternoon, Southfield's police chief says that 15 year old is in grave condition. It happened Sunday morning at the Weston Hotel on Civic Center Drive just off the Lodge Freeway. Sean Lay is live. Sean, the chief is angry about multiple aspects of what happened here. So many adults right now under investigation that police hope to make contact with very soon. Those adults should be expecting Southfield police officers at their door once they track them down. A 15 year old Loyola High School student, the school just wrote me, they're heartbroken and devastated. He's in grave condition. Number one, police want to track down the adult who made a reservation right here at the Southfield Weston for five very young teens, a room on the seventh floor right up here, and then left them completely unsupervised just after 8 30 yesterday morning. Police come here. They find that 15 year old Loyola High School student with a gunshot wound to his head. They found another teen right there armed to the absolute teeth. Because I've explained to the community how a group of 15 year olds are left at a hotel room unsupervised that had access to weapons. We see these things play out time and time again and the story remains the same where is the parental supervision and then how do these teens get access to weapons? A furious and frustrated Southfield Police Chief Elvin Barron not only updating us and the public as police have been inundated with calls about this tragic incident, but as the chief lays out the details so far, his message is what happened on the seventh floor of Southfield's Weston Hotel early Sunday morning was preventable. A 10th grader from Loyola High School in Detroit, a resident of Ferndale and a well-known student, is in Providence Hospital suffering from a gunshot wound to the front of his head. He is in grave condition. I said again, grave condition. Here's what investigators know so far. An adult booking the room at the Westin for five teens, all friends, a 16 year old and four 15 year olds. The teens unsupervised and just after 830 Sunday morning, the 15 year old was shot in his head. Police stopping two teens at the elevators. One teen had in his pants this Glock 22 40 caliber with extended magazine that holds 22 rounds and equipped with a laser sight that was stolen out of Flint in July of 2022, along with the Glock 9 millimeter that has no paper trail of ownership, marijuana and mushrooms also recovered. So again, I classify this as something that is totally preventable. Back here live. There's a lot more to dig into this that the police chief is sharing with us. We're working on that for six o'clock, but right now the 15 year old who had the weapons on him, he is now charged with carrying concealed weapons, but that's it. That could change as the investigation unfolds. Kimberly Devin, I also mentioned that the person who booked the room, police are tracking that adult down. They're tracing these weapons. Who had them? Who did not secure them? That person also, if it's a different person, will also be under investigation and will likely face charges. There's a lot going on here. Yeah, so so many questions remain. Sean, the, but the teen that's charged with having the guns, is that teen helping explain exactly what happened to police? He He's charged taking the children's village. Parents contacted. They have hired an attorney. So right now, no, they continue to investigate. Right, keep us posted, Sean. We appreciate it. A 72 year old pilot is OK after the small plane he was piloting crashed into some trees in Livingston County. Happened right around one o'clock this afternoon in Green Oak Township. When police got to the scene, they found the plane hanging. As you see here, the pilot was safely on the ground. Pilot says a gust of wind sent him into the trees. The FAA has been called in to investigate. Police are looking for answers on Detroit's east side after finding a man shot to death inside a home. This was a scene just before 5 a.m., just a few hours after the discovery was made. It happened at a home on Irvington Street near State Fair between I-75 and John R. We don't know much, but we do know police were alerted to the home from a shot spotter call, and the man's body was found in the living room. We'll keep you updated as we work to learn more information. In Washtenaw County, police in Pittsville Township are investigating multiple thefts of pride flags and Black Lives Matter signs. And one of the incidents was caught on camera. Police say it's the second time it's happened. Will Jones spent the day in that neighborhood. He's with us live now. Will, uh, some neighbors that you talked with pretty upset about this. 
Look, Devin and Kimberly, neighbors say all they're trying to do is spread love, but this has happened before, and they've had these signs up for years, though, and before these last two incidents, they haven't had any problems. A home security camera on Crane Road in Pittsfield Township last Friday capturing a man pulling down a pride flag. His next target, a Black Lives Matter sign, which he appears to save most of his rage for. He slams it to the ground and then rips it up, the driver telling him to hurry up. The man hops in the SUV and they drive off. Neighbors say repeating the same acts at homes along this street. And they say, unfortunately, this wasn't the first time. It also happened last month. It's shock because in the eight years I've lived here, we've never had a problem. When there's a, an attack on a, a symbol of my existence, like that's, that's an attack on me, my right to exist. And I'm not gonna be silenced in that. After the first incident, neighbors doubled down on their efforts to make this neighborhood a welcoming place. They want to send a strong message to the people responsible. They took two flags from me this time, so I'm gonna hang four. And if those get vandalized, we'll hang eight and we can just keep playing this game. I actually bought mine in bulk. Every time I buy them, a donation gets made to an LGBTQ organization. I think one of the silver linings of this whole thing is it's really brought our community together. There was one pride flag that wasn't stolen this last time. That's because neighbors put it up higher, so it was out of reach of the thieves. So others are planning to do the same this time. We are live. Will Jones, Local 4. And Will, what are we hearing from police? Police, they're calling it disappointing, and they say they're increasing patrols in the area, and they're hoping that our viewers identify the people responsible. Devin? Yeah, let's hope so. All right, Will. A fraternity at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor has been suspended from its national organization amid allegations of hazing. It's happening at the Alpha Epsilon Pi fraternity, and according to reports, all operations have been suspended. So let's get out to Mara McDonald. She's live on this story. Mara, what all did you find out? Well, Kimberly, this all started when a video surfaced on social media, a viral video that if you talk to the kids on campus up here, that shows allegedly it hasn't been verified pledges here at AE Pi being hit and kicked. Let me show you. Alpha Epsilon Pi is the largest Jewish fraternity in the United States. Its chapter here at the University of Michigan has had issues in the past with hazing, and now their national organization is pulling their charter over this latest situation. We're not showing you the video that's circulating on social media because it's unverified, but on it you see what is likely a group of pledges sitting in a circle on the ground with members hitting and kicking them. The video is short. We don't see what precedes the kicking and hitting, but the clip got out and now has been reported to the Ann Arbor Police Department. The PD is asking anyone with information on that video to contact the department directly. The official word from the University of Michigan tonight is, quote, the university condemns hazing practices and supports the use of strong responsive action, including notification to chapter headquarters, university sanctions, and possible legal action. Back here live, the University of Michigan goes on to delineate something that AE Pi is a chartered fraternity through its national organization. However, it is not part of the University of Michigan's Interfraternity Council. We're live in Ann Arbor tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Okay, Mara, thank you. Just in here at 5, the presumptive Republican nominee for president, Donald Trump, is making a visit here to Metro Detroit ahead of the Michigan primary. He's going to hold a get-out-the-vote rally in Waterford Township. That will be Saturday night. He is going to speak at 7 p.m. at the Elite Jet Center at Oakland County International Airport Road. Tickets are general admission, but you do have to register to get them. We turn our attention to the weather, a live look at the Detroit skyline from our Windsor Sky Cam and look at that picture. <laughs> Sun just, uh, just getting set to, or getting started on its setting, but we get, we gain a little more daylight yeah. too, right? It's, it's gorgeous. Sunset is at six tonight, mm -hmm. uh, and we've really had a great stretch these last few days. So let's get over to Kim Adams and our first look at the forecast. Kim? Yeah, 601 to be exact. So finally after six o'clock, and I notice when I'm walking into the studio, usually it's, it's dark when I come here for the five o'clock show, and now it's just light all the way through six. So it makes you feel a little better, especially when you get that late day sunshine. 39 right now in Mount Clemens and Port Huron, 41 in uh, the city and 42 out at the airport. A little warmer than it was yesterday, especially 
in the northern suburbs where it's seven degrees warmer in Lapeer, six degrees warmer in Pontiac and Howell, and three degrees warmer out in Ann Arbor. We've had plenty of sunshine here. It's been a little activity up north, though. There's some snow in northern lower Michigan, and we are going to be getting in on some snow as well as we go into the second half of the week. Tomorrow morning at the bus stop, though, it'll be dry, 29 degrees. We'll get up to 38 in the afternoon, but tomorrow you'll notice partly cloudy skies, and you'll also notice the winds will be a little bit stronger, keeping our wind chills in the 20s. Temperatures, not really much of a problem this week. We'll have temps that will be above uh, average. Tomorrow will be 37. Our average high is still 33. But at the end of the week, we are expecting some snow. And coming up, we'll talk about exactly when that snow will come and how it could affect one of your morning commutes this week. Yeah.